All right. So hello. Um, as of in the well, in the next few decades, 22 million, around 22 million people are going to be displaced as a result of extreme weather events such as floods. The problem is that when people are displaced, they don't have access to clean water. And the current policy which ensures their access is insufficient, as we will illustrate in this presentation. We are Team Competence. I'm Vladimira. I'm Sundara. And I'm Eva. And hello from Amsterdam. Um, we've already identified the problem. We will talk briefly about our solution, our success metrics, the financial picture, the comparison with current technology, as already mentioned, and then we will finish off with some questions. So our solution as a nonprofit is to bring um, water purification uh, trucks towards uh, refugee camps that have from people that have been affected by floods. As you can see here in the picture, we've identified a uh, area that is vulnerable to flooding. We've stationed uh, pure water purification trucks in a safe area outside of the flooding region. When um, flooding happens, people will go to refugee camps and our trucks will meet them there to ensure that um, water gets purified at the place where they need to be. So our process is to start by identifying strategic storage facilities in safe locations. There, we will train and employ local community leaders in order to make sure that they are close to the uh, water tracks when needed and that the, they have a good reputation among the local people and thus that when a water truck is being deployed that they will be effective. So as soon as a crisis hits we will deploy our trucks to the refugee camps. Then as you can see we have identified three metrics of success. First of all, we aim to get a 48 hour response time, which for us indicates or is a proxy for deployment variables, such as identification of where refugee camps will be, um, what the um, different elements of travel are, our setting up time and other elements such as basic organization and uh, communication of protocol. Then we also aim to hit 150,000 liters a day as production. In other words, we want to provide 8,000 people a day um, with water just by deploying one truck. Um, this to us is to make sure, is a metric to make sure that we can hit an efficient, consistent um, performance that uh, allows us to go in effectively and uh, yeah, provide enough water. Also, uh, equal distribution to us is important to prevent uh, security issues and um, make sure that even that everyone is provided with clean water from uh, vulnerable people to um, yeah, vulnerable people. All right. Uh, so in the first year, we hope to deploy the system in the central region. And to do so, we hope to uh, deploy 50 trucks. This is our brief budget. It's in millions of US dollars. And we um, aim to get 4.8 million US dollars. Um, you can see the budget on the slide. I will not go through it more because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so we hope to gain our main funding from Japan's GTP system, which uh, or GTP grant which has already uh, funded similar projects in the past um, in Malaysia and other regions. Uh, we hope to cooperate with the UN Refugee Agency and the Bangladeshi government to locate um, effectively where the refugee camps which urgently need water are um, and, and further um, deploy them there. As far as environmental sustainability is concerned, um, we have allocated three main sources of possible environmental unsustainability. So first of all, acquisition, we hope to get secondhand trucks um, uh, into which we hope to install um, the water filtration systems. As far as operation is concerned, we hope to use a low energy generator uh, filtration system, which has a rechargeable battery. And in, so in that regard, the only emissions are travel emissions. Uh, as far as maintenance is concerned, the system lasts for up to 20 years. 
uh, the filtration system um, can be cleansed with merely water. And so all that remains is truck maintenance. Okay, so our product provides clean water without sediment in it. Theirs also has a higher capacity and it has limited uh, user error. Compared to chlorine tablets, our product provides 16 liters per hour versus one tablet for, provides five liters and it also takes four hours. What our tablet, it's because of reduced chlorine emissions in the water and um, therefore the health risks are less and also it's safer for vulnerable populations to use such as pregnant people, people with thyroid diseases and liver issues. Also the environmental impact of ours is less because there's not the chlorine runoff from the water. I'm not sure if we clarified, but the chlorine tablets are the policy currently in use. So we, we apologize if we forgot to clarify that earlier, but that is the uh, policy that is in use in emergency situations such as these. So where there's not a set up refugee camp, but you need to water clean water immediately. Also, one of the things to be noted about the chlorine tablets is that if you put a bucket of water and put a chlorine tablet in, it only removes the bacteria. It does not remove any of the sediments such as wood, sand, or stones, whereas our filtration system would. All right. Thank you for your attention, and we hope to get some questions. All right. Thank you so much. So uh, whenever the first question is asked by a judge, uh, the timer for five minutes will begin. Uh, so I'm happy to start. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, can you explain a little bit more? Because um, you said you were going to have 50 different, 50 trucks. Uh, how much water can these hold per day? Was it the 150,000 liters or was that something different? And then a second question is what happened? Did you think about any mitigation strategies if your truck is unable to get there within the 48 hour response time? Um, so 150 liters per, per truck. So in total, it would be much more if you include the whole fleet. And also with our mitigations, if it wasn't responded in the response time, our plans were um our plans were to well initially this is just the first year we're looking at so we want to kind of keep it quite simple and we forgot to mention during our presentation we are uh, focusing mainly on the central region um so the idea of our non-profit is for the first year to provide the service but also to identify um as many issues as possible and to then um, refine our process. So to look at, for example, if there is trouble with getting there in the 48 hours, like what is the issue? That's the whole idea of the success measurement to see, um, well, if we don't get there, then what are the reasons? Um, is this an issue with a vehicle? Is this the, an issue with the filtration system? Is this an issue with our um, with the vehicle getting ready? Stuff like that. Um, if the yeah, I presume to ensure that we get there as, as soon as possible. That was the aim or basically that's where we hope to work with local communities to safely store the vehicles and to cooperate with them so that they know when there is an emergency. So to train the community leaders and when there is an emergency, they can deploy the truck. I hope that answers the questions. Yeah, uh, I had a follow-up question on the same around the movement of both your tr suggested trucks and also movement of people. Weather is so unpredictable. You may store your, or you may station your truck at station A, assuming that that is a dry zone, but then a cyclone hits that si uh, that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that that area. So have you done any predictions or any analysis on which are the safe zones for you to store these trucks? And how far are they from the refugee centers? Because there's always a minimum distance that is expected for refugees to travel to get to water sources. Um, so that's why we were hoping, so in the central region, there's two main rivers, right? And we were hoping to keep some of the trucks more northwise 
um, or more north, um, so that there they are not all say stored in the same place. So I, I suppose we have to clarify that they are all stored in different regions that are near high risk regions that might be more hilly and they might be safer. Of course, we can't ensure whether they're going to be safer, right? And that's also why we hope to cooperate with um, the UN. That's why we hope to cooperate with local communities, with the government to ensure that we can move them and store them safely, right? So this will this will improve as we go and we need to stay, uh, stay ur urgent, right? And also because we are working with local communities, um, we are hoping to employ people, right? So we are hoping to have people on the ground who do take care of the stuff and who do identify where the safest place to, to store the trucks would be. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, at this time then, um, judges, if you could please go to the deliberation room for five minutes and everyone else, take a break. Thank you very much. <laughs> 